Austin, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host of two shows and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I'm bringing on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. Hey, podcast and Amplify listeners, welcome back to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about what I think is a fun topic, leadership. Now, I have experienced not so great leadership. I've experienced mediocre leadership. And then I've had maybe one or two instances of great leadership. And when you can get that experience. It's really special. So I wanted to talk about that today on the podcast. Today, we are talking with Petra Vega. She is the founder and liberatory leadership coach. Oh, I love that. Of Create More Possibilities. Petra helps marginalized leaders. So BIPOC, queer, neurodivergent, basically anyone who's mere existence challenges the status quo to cultivate their liberatory power so they can show up powerfully and fully themselves and make a deeper impact on the world. She's also a facilitator, radical social worker, and emergent strategist, and has over a decade of experience that she's going to bring to the show today. So welcome, Petra. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Kristen. So let's dive into some of the common myths around what leadership is. I know I mentioned different levels that I've experienced, Mm -hmm. but what are those myths that, you know, we can start to dismantle? Yeah. Yeah. And so I was trying to think about like, what are the ones that I've seen uh, most prevalent in the folks that I work with? Because there's so many, right? So I I tried to nail it down to five. (laughs) So the first one I would say is that leaders are not supposed to be vulnerable. That there's a, a weakness in showing emotion or demonstrating that piece of you is a big one. And I think like for folks who are highly sensitive, that's not going to work with us. You know, I'm like that is part of our, our package. Um, another one that I ha- like really found was this phrase around like leaders are born, not made. So that there's an intrinsicness to who gets to be a leader or who is deemed a leader. Uh, that is like either you have it or you don't have it. And someone who builds power and builds a leadership with with people collectively and personally. I'm like, that's not true. Right. So that's another one. Um, this one, I wonder is part of if I wonder if it's part of your bucket of like not so good leadership examples where it's like the leader needs to have all the answers, right? That like mm. you're the all knowing. Uh, I feel like attached to that is like that there's you also can do no wrong and you're probably not consulting with other people. Um, another one that I found was like the, a title or position. So really like what's the name or or your particular label that dictates leadership, right? That if you're not the CEO, the executive or something, you're not in a leadership position. Um, and then I think the last one that you kind of, you and I would probably agree as a myth is that, uh, that you need to be extroverted, right? You have to be social, you have to be out there. You have to have like the gift of gab. And I'm like, that's just one of the ways that introverts get slighted. It's like, oh, you don't show up in the same way. So you can't possibly be a leader. Okay. Every single one of those so resonated with me. (laughs) And it might be because I am a highly sensitive person. I'm an introvert. And you get those messages all the time. Implicit, explicit. um, But I love these things that you talked about because I think, you know, being vulnerable is a superpower. And being a good listener, you're this extrovert and you're on not to say that you can't be a good listener but you're on and you're not maybe necessarily like sitting back and and taking in what other people are saying or feedback um the sort of you're born a leader or you're not like a a gift that you have that other people Mm -hmm. don't I believe that one for a long time I just felt like oh they have that special thing that I don't have. And that took me a long time to realize you can lead different ways and le- leading is just a skill. And then the all knowing that rose me the wrong way. And I think yes. it always has because <laughs> I'm like, well, you don't know everything and I'm not just going to trust in you. These are like brilliant myths that should definitely be taken out of our beliefs around 
leadership. So how can we do that? How can we lead differently? How can we infuse our values into our leadership? Yeah. And so I think the the first step that I would offer is just like, how do we define leadership, right? That I think particularly as entrepreneurs and the thing that I have enjoyed most is that we get to redefine, we get to play with language, right? Like I am the liberatory leadership coach, right? That to name a podcast, like all of these things that we get to be creative and say, this doesn't exist. Let me make it exist, right? Like that is a particular type of power. One of the ways that your leadership can show up. And so I would offer like, just defining leadership, right? That when I was looking at like, okay, what do I want to focus on in my business? What's the thing that I feel is missing and that I could be able to engage with? And I was like, oh, this piece around leadership, but everything that I found around that definition, like perpetuated these myths, right? That was like, you're the first one to talk or you're like out there in the world, everybody knows you or you're like, uh, you're very knowledgeable about everything. And I'm like, this excludes so many people. And that's just not the way that I want to lead with like exclusion as a value that I'm like, either you have it or you don't have it. I'm like, I don't want that. Right. And so for myself, the way that I redefine leadership is it is a process of being responsible for and responsive to self and others. Right. So that there's a piece of responsibility that I think we think about around titles where you're like, oh yeah, maybe you're managing a team or like you want it, you're responsible for helping your clients meet whatever that goal is, that's a sense of responsibility, right? But then at the same time, the other half that I feel like has been missing is the responsive piece, right? That like, after you take an action, make a decision, try a particular uh, practice or project, what's been the response? How are you adjusting and adapting to that and making sure that you don't lose yourself or the other person in that mix? And so I think that's one way is like, define leadership. What, What does that mean to you? Yeah, I love that because that does give you the opportunity to include your values because Mm -hmm. leadership is personal, right? Like you're leading people and that is a bigger responsibility and showing up in integrity with yourself is so important and that gives other people that permission to do so as well. You know, being a leader is a, can be a powerful position. Yes. And you can affect a lot of change in that group that you're leading or team, or maybe it's just a few people. So I love that definition of leadership, you know, how you're redefining it and to make it more inclusive and not say, oh, you have to check these boxes. When you're listing those things, it made me think of also um, charisma. Mm. I feel like with a lot of leaders, I feel like, oh, they have this innate charisma. You have to have that as well, you know, and it's like, That in terms of the list of things that are important is probably like, it's important, right? To draw people to you. But if you don't have that, then you're going to feel like, oh, then that's not for me. Yeah. And and I think it kind of goes back to this piece around values, right? That is like, do you want, do you want people to be like, uh, drawn to you in a particular way, right? And I can't think about what value that might be. That might be your thing, right? That you're like, oh, I want to, or magnetic, that I'm just trying to be like a magnet and I want to attract people, right? But if your value, like for me, one of my values in my company is rigor, right? It's like, it's going to be hard work. And I just know that whatever work I'm getting into, it's going to be deep. It's going to be uh, uh, thoughtful. It might be, it's going to stretch me, right? And it's going to test me in the kind of way. And so the way that I show up then is with some of that, right? That I'm like, I'm probably not asking very basic questions when I'm talking to people, <laughs> But that just goes along with like how I want to show up and how I want to divide my leadership, right? was like, oh, yeah, someone can ask you like, what's your favorite cappuccino, right? I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be like, oh, what's a moment in your life that you can, uh, that changed your world, right? Like, that's what I'm curious about, right? Like going deeply in with people. And so, again, it doesn't, it's not like this is good or this is bad. But for us to have a clear assessment of like, how do I want to show up, right? And it might be in this way of like redefining. It might be in seeing like, oh, how do other people describe me? But I think, again, with entrepreneurship, we get to do that self-definition, right? So it might be like, I've shown up charismatic because I was like, oh, I want to be the shiny object. I want people to gravitate towards me. Oh, but now I want to shift to more like, I want to go deep with people. I want people to see like, oh, there's depth here, right? There's a deep ocean of waters and uh, there's trust here within myself and within you. Like those are the things that I want to embody. We get to make those choices. I love that. I, and thank you for giving that example of how you embody that in your leadership and what values are important to you. And it, you know, helps us see that, okay, we, we could just take some time to sit with ourselves and 
write down like, what are the things? Do I want to be deep? Do I want to be charismatic? And, you know, you can figure out like maybe percentages, like you said, like yeah. maybe in these moments, maybe I want 10% like woo, which is <laughs> what, um, <laughs> So I don't know if you've ever done Strengths Finder, but woo is a, a, a strength. And actually my husband has that. And uh, I was like one of his top strengths. My woo was like on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's We're not like what I would, woo. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that's not what I would lead with. But, um, you know, someone like him would, you know, who wants to like meet people where they are and see them and 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 get them excited and, and that's, you know, definitely a top value. So, you know, maybe if you've done any kind of work like strengths finders or um, personality evaluations. Yeah, evaluations, that's a great place to like tap into like, what are my values? What are my strengths? And how can I just lead with those and dial them up? So how can you be a good leader as an entrepreneur? You know, we're working in these non-traditional environments and sometimes we have several people on our teams. Sometimes we're a team of one, um, but we typically are the boss. Like we don't have a boss We're we're leading, even if we're not leading teams, we're leading our communities. So how can, how can we do that in this specific context? Yeah. Is I think two two things are kind of coming to mind, and one of them is I think it's really useful to audit your your values, right? Audit to see like what are your values? Are they still tried and true? Do they still speak to how you want to show up? How you want to lead in this space? What you want to be known for, right? And so you might want to do this annually, quarterly, like depending on how your planning is a part is is kind of broken down. Um, to see like, okay, how much are my values showing up in my practice, right? Like this is something that I did with one of my first clients that really wanted to deepen into their anti-racist value. Um, and so we looked at like, how is it showing up in your operations? How is it showing up in your coaching? How is it showing up in where your money goes, right? When you're redistributing those funds, what does all that stuff look like? So that we can see one, we're like, look at us living into our values, right? In a world that is like, just... Uh, a, a miss with like cognitive dissonance and people are saying one thing and doing another thing, right? And part of the change that we want to make is like, what is in alignment with what we believe? And because I believe like, that's also going to make you feel better, right? Like you're going to feel more grounded, more powerful, more like, oh yeah, I want to talk to anyone and anyone about this thing. Cause I know that like, I walk my walk, which is like not a thing that may be the norm, right? So I think like auditing your values on a, on a semi-regular basis might be one way. Um, and then I think another one that this is really kind of speaks back to the power of like social capital networks, but it might be to cultivate like a trusted council, right? In the same ways that you might have a business friend who's like, I'm going to launch this thing. Please make sure I launch this thing, <laughs> right? Or someone who's like, I'm going to talk to this person around like all of my struggles. Who are the people that are going to hold you lovingly accountable and bring you closer to yourself in those moments? Where you're like, I have to make a decision or I'm not sure or... Uh, maybe there might be two choices that are equally good in a kind of way, but you're like, okay, how do I, how do I allow my values to kind of lead me in this kind of way? That can be very difficult if you don't have a practice of that individually. And I'm also someone who's not like, do it all alone. Cause I get, I think that's how we perpetuate the myths around leadership is that you do it alone. And so I think in entrepreneurship, it's like, as you're building those business buddies or folks that you're connected to, who are the people that like really get me, really get what I'm trying to do, who can be like, that's wrong, what, what you doing? over there <laughs> it was like so much love and respect would be like oh I don't I don't know about this what do, what do you think what's going on here you know yeah that that makes a lot of sense it, it's nice to have people who hold us accountable and <laughs> you know make sure that we are living out just authentically genuinely yeah. in alignment like you said so can you give listeners and me <laughs> some tips mm -hmm. for you know how we can be in our power as leaders mm -hmm. so that we can empower others? I know this is something that you're very passionate about. Yeah, I love, love, love talking about power. I just did a series all about power. So I'm like, I highly would recommend folks to like all the ways that people define it. So again, I'm like, again, someone who I think that we have a lot of conversation about particular words and we think we're all having the same conversation. And I'm like, I don't know that we are. So again, like, Going back to like, how do we define power, right? And even seeing like, do you like that? Does that, because like, however you define it or what your relationship with power, is going to make it more difficult for you to harness it, right? And I think as entrepreneurs, this is a big piece of our 
uh, self work, collective work is to is to stand and to access our power on a regular basis. I think like how we define it, how we relate to it, is going to be a big part of that equation. Um, and then I also wanted to offer that this like um, I you I used to supervise social work students, and one of the things that uh, social workers really care about is empowering other people, right? And I'm like want to. Uh, look at that word in power specifically. And so I wanted to offer this phrase um, that I found online. I could share it if you want to put it in the show notes that says, I don't empower people. People already have their own power. I learned how to not be disempowering. Mm. And so I love I'm like, that. Okay. And so even if we switch it, like, how do I not be disempowering in this moment, in this conversation, in this decision? in this event, like wherever, how can I not be disempowering? And I'm just like, what if we just shifted it? I think that's one. Um, And I think the other piece is really like similar to the values audit, but really tapping into what, what, what are the moments that you can recall that bring you closer to your power? And you were like, that was a powerful moment for me. And I know for me specifically as someone who like grew up in a household, uh, there's very traditional Latinx household that was like, children should be seen and not heard. Um, the way that I found my power isn't speaking up, right? Particularly when my voice cracked because I'm a hyper, uh, highly sensitive person. I'm deeply empathetic and I'm like, I have something to say. And so like those moments where I'm like, oh, when I say something, I know I feel myself in my full power and then creating opportunities for that. Right. And so thinking about like, oh, what helps you feel in your power? Right. It might be when you're doing a service out in the world or it might be when you're like, I'm just letting my creativity flow and I've created something that did not exist before. Right. But really getting curious around like, what are the times that I felt in my power? It seemed like, what are the through lines through there? Okay. There's so much here. (laughs) So (laughs) I definitely relate to, you know, being in the Latinx household, seen and not heard was literally said to us (laughs) several times. And it's interesting that you said that you look for opportunities to use your voice um, as being more of a shy, pro, you know, introverted person. And mm-hmm. I can relate to that as well. And that you were looking for ways to, to use your voice. And it's so funny because, you know, I just did this, uh, my first national conference speaking event. Mm-hmm. I just kind of felt a little goosebumps like, oh, that's so interesting. Like when you maybe aren't, don't, aren't, aren't given those opportunities to speak than to be that person who seeks out the stage, right? Who seeks out the, because you have something important to say. Yeah. So that really landed with me personally. Yes. Yeah, good. And I know you're always like something I was listening to your podcast again this morning and you're like, how many stories can we bring into, into the awareness, right? That there's so many more stories that we need to be listening to. And so I'm like, that also includes us. But I think we're like, oh, it's this story and that story. But like, we also have stories. But how do we also allow ourselves and, and allow the, the power that we can hold in our story to be able to share that too. Yes. Yeah. And, and speaking of being in your power, I mean, sharing your story is such a fantastic way to do that. Hey friends, we'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to take just a few seconds to invite you to a free workshop that I created. It's called launch a binge worthy podcast. And it's all about helping you to create a heartfelt podcast that reaches your soul listeners and grows your business. If you want access, just go to podcastandamplify.com. It's totally free. Okay, friend, back to the show. And then I also loved your shift of how can you not like disempower people? Because that gives others so much credit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you're already starting them at a level of that's more elevated than let me tap, let me maybe tap into your power or let me help empower you. It's like, you're already at this level. I just need to kind of get out of your way, maybe provide guidance. So if you need it, or if you, you know, you, you ask me, or if I can identify those situations, I got goosebumps too. When you said that, I was like, oh yeah, that's a very important shift in terms of approaching leadership. Yeah. Especially, say, especially around leadership, right. That we're like, oh, the leader gets to decide, right. But what if you, what if you came into a leadership uh, understanding or position, however that may be. And you were like, everyone is already a leader. I actually don't have to lead people. I just have to like, for me, I'm like, it's about trust. It's about communication. It's about collaboration. When like, how do you allow everyone's gifts to be in the space and not pigeonhole people because you're like, oh, you only do this thing. 
And even for for us, we could be like, oh, I'm just an entrepreneur. You're like, you're like a badass. <laughs> don't ever, don't ever allow yourself to be like, oh, I'm just anything. It, it is though very hard, even still for me to to not think of a leader in a top down scenario. That's a real challenge because I think I'm a very visual person. So I kind of mm-hmm. see pictures in my mind or, I, you know, I, when I think about things, I usually have a vision and it's still a little bit of like this hierarchy in my head, even though consciously I know that's mm-hmm. not where I, how I value leadership or how I think it, it really is the most effective or how it should be. But it, there are so many, I guess, ingrained messages that we see and that are reinforced. I mean, I worked in communicate corporate communications for 15 years. So that's a long time to get that messaging. And it's just like, it's kind of that work to, to be like, I know this is not what I, you know, subscribe to, but it's, it's presented to us in a lot of different yeah. places. It's like, you have to constantly do the work of like, okay, that's out there, but that's not how I want to move through the world. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 And I think, thank you for acknowledging that. Cause I think that's the the big piece, right? That's like, there's so many things that we have seen, either seen firsthand or we've heard about, or we're like, that's probably, I don't, and that's not really my jam, but I see that everyone seems to be doing this thing. And for me, I'm like the parts where when I'm doing this work around, like what, what are the practices that can uphold? Like if we don't want to have hierarchical thinking, right? Which is like a segment of white supremacy and patriarchy and all the things, right? If we don't want that, how do we slow down, which it sounds like you're doing. So I'm like, oh, Kristen, <laughs> how do we slow down in those moments and be like, oh, here, okay, here I am thinking in hierarchy again, right? Why, what, what, what about that, right? And I'm always like, well, what, what is this trying to take care of for me with particular emotions? And I'm like, well, I'm curious around like, oh, if we, if there's an idea or a, a norm or a, a, a belief that we have, I'm like, oh, in what kind of way is it taking care of something? Because it, it must be functioning in some kind of way, right? Versus like, get it out, demolish it. Like, <laughs> it's more like aggressive way that I'm like, well, how do we get curious? How do we have like extensive compassion to like that form of thinking and, and to see like, oh, it did, it did work in some kind of way, right? And right. at the same time, we get to make a decision. We're like, I can see how it could be useful. And I want to tone in this muscle. And I'm always thinking about like, how do we develop practices of the muscle? And um, I don't know if you know, I think you have someone who talked about embodiment, but the way that I learned around like somatic work, right? It's like, if you do something 300 times, it becomes a habit. But if you do something 3000 times, it becomes a body where you don't even think about it, right? And so for me, as someone who's like, I'm trying to undo all the systems of oppression in my thinking and my heart and my soul, that I'm like, oh, I have a good muscle of being like, Mm-mm, this is not an alignment. <laughs> but for folks who may be listening, that you're like, there may be a stirring in your soul or in your thinking that you're like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, right? I don't know that I agree. That's the first step is just to like allay, like allow that awareness to come in. Because once it's in the conscious, we can do something with it. Okay, so I love your suggestion to get curious. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so important. And you're not judging yourself for like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking this way. And I, I know better. And and in that kind of space, you're just honoring where you're at, what's coming in, and being curious about why. And yeah. that's such a such an important place to be. Um, and yes, the embodiment, it's it's important as well because you know, our bodies know first. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any final leadership tips you want to share with us? Anything I missed? Just to be tender with yourself. We have conscious and subconscious uh, messages around leadership all the time from the media, from our parents, from our partners and loved ones that we're like, again, just wanting to offer that like all of these things are happening at the same time. And if you are like, I haven't thought about this thing, right? And like, let me get, I'm behind, right? If you're like, I'm always thinking about like, what are the ways that we can put uh, extra pressure on ourselves and like, maybe, maybe not. Right. And just like allow, allow this to kind of swim into your brain and, 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 you know, and then, and then take stock, right. We're like, Oh, what is, what does leadership mean to me? How am I leading? What do I want the legacy of my work to be of how I show up to be? Um, but just to really be tender with yourself. And I'm like, we just need to be easier on ourselves. That's a great suggestion because I want to acknowledge that like leadership is not easy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's challenging and it brings up a lot of stuff for you, right? You're going to have to face your things because you're dealing with people 
right? And everyone's different. Everyone has their thing. So, you know, I respect really great leaders. I mean, they're amazing. We all do, right? We've all had that leader where we're like, oh, this person. How do they do it? Yeah. How do they do it? They're, <laughs> they're so inspiring. Um, and so I give props to those people who've just, you know, figured out how to do it well and how to do it mm-hmm. in their own way. And I also know that it's it's a big responsibility and it, it, it they, we can get confronted by a lot of things when we're, when we're leading people. So I love that suggestion to be tender with yourself. Yeah. Give yourself grace, always important. And so I want to end our chat with my signature question for this season. Mm-hmm. What is your superpower? Yeah, I think I was like, I had a few that I was thinking about sharing, but I'm like, I'm funny. I'm really funny. I'm like, I don't know <laughs> how many people know. And I am I'm, I'm going to make a thoughtful intention around like showing that more side of myself for, for with folks. But I'm like, I'm damn funny. And I'm just going to claim that for myself. That's what other people shall, tell me. But I just want to name that. I'm like, I'm real funny. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Petra is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Petra is hilarious. <laughs> I love that. You know, I've gotten so many diverse answers to this question, and every every answer is just like so unique and special to that yeah. person. So <laughs> I I respect your. You know what? It's funny too. I think I'm funny, but I don't think that really comes across. Sometimes I can have maybe a dry sense of humor or. And then my husband says, oh, you think you're really funny. And I'm like, I do. I crack myself up. And you know what? Like, I don't need anyone else to make me laugh. I can do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> my partner too. Like, she's like, you're so fun. She thinks I'm in a sitcom. And I'm like, oh, how do I? I'm like, this is totally part of my personality. But again, like, you got to reach out. Come talk to me. And I'm I'm going to make you laugh. Like, that's just part of what it's I do. It's going to be like, a good time, right? Now, yeah. Yeah. I was like, hashtag Kristen's funny. Like, we're going to make this. Let's, let's, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your superpower. And I want to make sure that people know how they can find out about you and how they can connect with you. So please share um, any of your links or your website or any of that good stuff. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Create More Possibilities. Come say hi. If you want more of what I got given to the world, feel free to join my email list, The Possibilities Pod. Um, yeah, create more possibilities. I'm mostly on Instagram, but also on Facebook. Great. So I will link to all of those places in the show notes. Petra, this has been a great conversation. I feel so inspired to like go out there and be a leader in my own unique way. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of Podcast and Amplify. If you love the show, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And the best way to support this show is by sharing, rating, and reviewing the podcast. For those of you who leave a review, you'll get the chance to win a 30-minute strategy session or a mini audit of your existing podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, your voice and what you have to offer is needed in the world. Until next week, take care.